So the best thing to do is when you go to the fishmonger, you ask where are the scallops from and are they dry packed or water packed? You want dry packed. And you see how nice and translucent they look. So I take them out when I get them home and just put them on some paper towel because I really want to dry the outside of them so that I can get a nice sear on the scallops when I cook them. We're just going to do this very quickly in a frying pan. So spread them out and you can let them sit there for a few minutes before you're ready to use them. Sometimes I do this ahead of time during the day. I cover them with plastic wrap, put them in the refrigerator and then that night I work with them. So there's our scallops. We have a pound of them. They're beautiful looking and this is the adductor muscle of the scallop. This is the part that allows the scallop shell to open and close and they really go through the water very quickly. So there they are. So now that we have them, we're going to set those aside and I'm going to tell you what kind of a sauce we're going to use for this. So we're going to make a lemon caper sauce, something very simple. So here are capers and you can either buy these in salt, in which case you will have to rinse them off and let them drain really well, or you can buy them in brine. These are capers in brine and I have to tell you the best ones come from the island of Pantelleria, which is right off of Sicily. And you can find those in uh, a grocery store. You can get them online or in an Italian enoteca or a, you know, a salum salumeria. You can find them. But if you can't find them, then you can go to your grocery store and just find generic capers. So we want to use the capers to flavor our sauce. So for our sauce, we have some butter. So here is some unsalted butter about five tablespoons that we've melted. I'm going to add some salt to it because it is unsalted. In Italy, all butter is unsalted. So we add that. We add the capers. That's the unopened seed pod of a flower that grows in crags and rocks in the Mediterranean. And then with it, we want to have some lemon. So Italians are really big on lemon with fish. So one way to get a lot of juice out of a lemon is to kind of roll it around on your counter first, you know, push on it a little bit. The other way to get a lot of juice out of a lemon is to put it in your microwave for about five seconds or so. It'll soften it up and you'll be able to get more juice that way as well. So now we want to, first of all, take the zest. So with a zester, zest the lemon. And that's going to add really nice flavor to this because we really just want something simple here. But we're also going to use some nifty vegetables like spinach and roasted tomatoes. So once you have all the zest off, well, then you want to cut your lemon and juice it. It would be ideal to take the pits out first. So add the juice. A small lemon like this is going to give you about a tablespoon of juice. And that's all there is to it. And this we're just going to keep on warm on the stovetop until we're ready for the scallops after they're cooked. So I'm going to cover that and just let that go back on the stove. All right, now we have to work with spinach. So here we have some fresh spinach. All I did was wash the leaves, put the leaves in a dry saute pan, put a cover on it, and just cooked it down. Then I drained off most of the water. I left some of the water on it because I want to have something that's going to have a little bit of liquid in it with the scallops. So now what we want to do is flavor that. So to do it, I want a couple cloves of garlic. You can just leave them whole, slice them in half, and we're going to take them and put them in our saute pan. All right, we're going to put a little bit of olive oil in our pan here. We're going to add some garlic, turn up the heat, and just press on that just to flavor that oil. Just want to flavor the oil. And then, once it's flavored, we're going to take the garlic out, and then we're going to add the spinach. We have flavored oil. Now stand back because the spinach is wet. So when it goes in there, 
It's going to give us a little sizzle. And we really want the spinach just to absorb the oil that's in the pan. And that's all there is to it. So now we can take that out because this is going to be the bed on which our scallops are going to lie. And we're going to set this aside and I'm going to come back and cook the scallops in the same pan because I'm a one pot girl. So what I've done is I've just kind of coated the scallops in the, uh, the flour mixture. So I'm going to put them back on the paper now. And I can tell that they're so fresh. They're, they're nice and fluffy and light and they're pretty to look at. They're not discolored or yellow. So we're going to heat up some oil in a pan and we only really want to do is sear these on each side. They really don't need a lot of cooking. So there they are and while I'm doing this I should mention to you that I have roasted some cherry tomatoes. So these are just cherry tomatoes that I put cut in half, put in a bowl. You want about a cup of cherry tomatoes. Put them in an, on a flat uh, baking dish with some olive oil and then roasted them at 350 for about 20 minutes or so until they collapse a little bit like this. So that's going to be part of the presentation. So now we're ready to cook the scallops. So we've got to get the pan really hot. So I have some olive oil in a pan, not a lot, and you can see that the smoke is coming up, so I know that that pan is hot enough. And I want to put the scallops in. Don't crowd them. Put them in a few at a time if you have to, because what we want to do is sear them on one side before we turn them over and sear them on the other side. So that's enough of those. And you watch them. You can start to see if a little crust is starting to form on the base and that's your cue then to turn them over but don't touch them because if the pan is hot enough that they're not going to stick if you don't have the pan hot enough then they will stick so you see how they're moving along nicely they're not they're not stuck which means that the pan is hot enough so you see what happens you get that beautiful sear on the other side if the if it starts to look a little too brown well then you just want to turn your heat down a little bit Okay, so now all we have to do is cook the other side, and these are done.